Hi there, uh, it's Ms. Danner. We are going to begin our discussion on Chapter 7, which is all about photosynthesis. Um, you probably already know photosynthesis is taking sunlight and making food. Um, our biofuels, oh, by the way, before we go any further, make sure you have your Chapter 7 learning objectives, your Chapter 7 notes, and open your text to 135. Um, and we are going to start off with an introduction. Um, biofuels is a term that means we the energy sources that we use uh, we get from living things. When we get energy from those biofuels, then we are ultimately um, tapping into sunlight and energy from the sun. So in living cells, solar energy is converted to the chemical energy of sugar through the process of photosynthesis. And that is your first objective. The first thing says define photosynthesis. There it is. Uh, and so this whole chapter, that's what we're going to talk about, is how photosynthesis works. Now, you see here wheat field um, that is powered by the sun. And this is symbolizing that all living things ultimately are powered by the sun. That, that's the, the, who drives all the energy in an ecosystem. So just some of the big ideas, we're going to have a little introduction, and we're going to get into the stages, step one and step two, which is light reaction and Calvin cycle. And then we're going to talk about how that relates to the real world. Um, so if you pick up with objective number one, uh, we did define photosynthesis, but we also need to define some more terms. Autotroph, photoautotroph, producer, and heterotroph. And then it wants us to briefly explain the benefit of photoautotroph. So plants are autotrophs, which means they make their own food. They are cell feeders. Um, they are the producers. That means they produce the food that feeds consumers. Now, organisms that are consumers cannot make their own food. They have to consume it. Now, the deal with photoautotroph is um, it's a specific type of autotroph that uses sunlight to make their food. So plants, algae, there are some photosynthetic protists and bacteria that are photoautotrophs because they make their own food, but they do it by using sunlight. Um, and the producers of that food is consumed by heterotrophs. And heterotrophs are consumers that feed on plants, animals, or they could be decomposers. They, you know, decompose and break down dead organic matter. So these terms are easy. You probably heard them before, but you do need to make sure you um, are understand those. And photoautotroph might be something that's new for you. Go ahead and, 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 and realize that prefix photo refers to light, sunlight. So you see a beautiful, three pretty, pretty pictures here. You see a tropical rainforest. You see kelp in the ocean. And then you see cyanobacteria, uh, which is a photosynthetic uh, type of, um, of bacteria. Now, what does self-feeding photoautotrophs require from their environment to make their food? Well, they have to have the sun. They got to have water. And they have to have carbon dioxide. All right, so those are the things that we have to have in order to do photosynthesis. Now, uh, if you look at objective two, it says describe the structure of a leaf and a chloroplast. So photosynthesis, we already know from the last unit that occurred, uh, photosynthesis takes place in chloroplast in the plant cells. But kind of more than that, leaves are actually the major sites of photosynthesis in most plants. Chloroplasts, I'm on page 137, are located in the mesophyll of a leaf. Uh, if you look, I'm going to show you a picture in a minute, but if you go ahead and look at it, you can see a cross-section of a leaf. That center, the majority of the leaf, the center where all the tissue and cells are, that's the mesophyll. And that's where you find all the chloroplast, which is where photosynthesis is going to happen. Now, there are also these little tiny pores, which are holes in the leaf, called stomata. And this is how carbon dioxide gets in and oxygen and water get out. Okay, so these gases and water enter and exit uh, by stomata. Stomata is plural, by the way. Stoma is singular. Uh, and then, of course, the roots absorb water and then deliver that to the leaves through vascular tissue. Now, that's the structure of a leaf, but it also wanted us to describe the structure of a chloroplast. So chloroplasts have a double membrane, an the inner and outer membrane. And they've got stacks of thylakoids. And these thylakoids are membranes. They're little, they look like coins, sort of. They're like little green coins uh, piled on top of each other. Um, but you have these stacks. And then around that, you've got a real thick fluid called stroma. And the stroma is just a fluid that surrounds uh, those thylakoids. Um, chlorophyll is an important part of chloroplast. It's a light-absorbing pigment. Uh, plays a really important role in converting solar energy to chemical energy. So this is the picture on 137. You can see here's a cross-section of a leaf. 
They're the center part. There's the mesophyll with all the mesophyll cells. Uh, if we blow that up, we also see all the little green chloroplasts that are in that mesophyll cell. Right here, you can see the stoma. Our stomata would be plural, and again, CO2 is coming in, oxygen is coming out. And then if we even get into the chloroplast, you see it's a double membrane. You can see that inner outer, the green thylakoids, and then around that, you've got the stroma. Okay, so you can see these really well, and it even goes through and, you know, kind of shows them even bigger. Uh, again, that mesophyll tissue, there's the stomata, uh, and then you can see the membranes, the inner outer, the thylakoids, and then the stroma for the chloroplast. Uh, and that shows you how small the chloroplast is inside a mesophyll cell. Uh, and then, of course, you can also see a microscopic image of, of the chloroplast. Now, this right here is the chemical formula for photosynthesis. So photosynthesis requires sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. And we're going to produce glucose and oxygen. And we're going to come back to this a lot, um, you know, several times in this chapter. But this is an Elodea plant, and it's showing oxygen bubbles. So this is an aquatic plant. And it, you know, it's kind of hard to like see photosynthesis taking place. But this is cool because you can see the oxygen being produced as a product of photosynthesis, which is indicated by the bubbles there. All right, so if we move to, to number three, it says, describe the role of redox reactions in photosynthesis and cell respiration. Um, so um, on page 138, just like uh, respiration, photosynthesis is a redox reaction, which means it's going to have oxidation and reduction. Uh, in photosynthesis, water is oxidized, which means it is going to donate hydrogens. And carbon dioxide is reduced, which means it is going to accept hydrogen electrons. Um, cell respiration is also a redox reaction. We already learned that in the last chapter. It harvests chemical energy that's stored in the glucose. Um, so both of these are redox. We, we're going to be transferring and rearranging hydrogen electrons. Remember, oxidize means to give up, and reduce means to accept. So your checkpoint question says, which redox process, photosynthesis or cell respiration, is exergonic? Uh, and so in class, you know, of course, we'll, we'll talk about these when we meet, but exergonic means to release energy. So hopefully you know that cell respiration is the exergonic reaction. So right here, again, here's our chemical formula. We have energy. Carbon dioxide is reduced, which means it accepts or gains hydrogens, and it becomes glucose. And water is oxidized or loses hydrogens, and it becomes oxygen gas. So, you know, we look at this as kind of opposite of what happens in cell respiration, but carbon dioxide is reduced. Reduced means to, to gain hydrogen. So we are picking up these hydrogens, and we're going to make glucose. And then water is oxidized. We, we give up hydrogens, and, and, of course, we make oxygen there. Okay? Now, the next objective, um, did it, did it, number four, says state the chemical formula for photosynthesis, which there it is right there. And then list the two stages, noting where each occurs. So we have two stages of photosynthesis, and they're linked by ATP and NADPH. So the first stage is called the light reaction, and it occurs inside the thylakoids. It is going to produce ATP and NADPH, which are needed for the second stage, which is the Calvin cycle. The Calvin cycle is step two, and it takes place in the stroma. Okay? Um, so in the light reaction, we're going to use sun and water. And we are going to um, start that conversion process. We're going to make ATP and NADPH. Those things are needed for the Calvin cycle. And the Calvin cycle uh, is going to take place in the stroma. And it's going to break carbon dioxide down. And it's going to make uh, an organic compound. It's going to make glucose. Uh, and that's called carbon fixation. So for chloroplasts to produce sugar from carbon dioxide in the dark, they would need to be supplied with... Um, and let me address that dark real quick. Calvin cycle is sometimes called the dark reaction because it doesn't require sunlight. It can happen at night. But it does require the light reaction, which requires the sunlight. Because without the light reaction, we don't have this ATP and NADPH that we've got to have to drive the Calvin cycle. So the answer to this would be for chloroplast to produce sugar from carbon dioxide in the dark, they would need to be supplied with ATP and NADPH. Okay, there's your chemical formula. That concludes objective number four. Uh, again, we have sunlight, 
plus carbon dioxide. You've got to know CO2 is carbon dioxide plus water. You've got to know H2O is water. Yields or produces glucose and oxygen. Glucose is C6H12O6 and oxygen is O2, that oxygen gas. Okay. All right. So we are going to stop there and we will pick up with the next objectives in video B.